Hey guys, welcome to The Sounding Mind, the loud inside voice that speaks the truth and nothing but the truth to power. This is the channel that focuses on exposing the hypocrisy of the left agenda. They fail to understand the memo or the message. How long have we been discussing Bud Light? Two and a half months? It's been three months already. I believe the third month is almost upon us. And the one thing you always hear industry insiders like me yelling into a microphone to report on this stuff. One thing that keeps coming up is that this Bud Light thing won't go away. They've dug themselves into such a deep hole that they won't be able to simply weather the storm, you know, by being silent for a few months and then quietly re-entering the public glare in the hopes that people would only have goldfish memory and poof their issues will magically disappear. Everyone has been stating this, and this has been the analysis throughout. And it appears that everyone received the memo with the exception of Bud Light. This week, Bud Light made an attempt to re-enter Twitter. Since the beginning of this controversy to middle of April, they haven't tweeted. They haven't posted anything since April 1st. And then I believe they sent one brief tweet on April 14th, precisely when the get woke, go broke reaction really started to strike hard. Now that everything has allegedly been resolved, Bud Light is back to business as usual. They still haven't apologized and haven't done much, and they still believe that things will just miraculously turn out in their favor. Well, let's just say that Bud Light is once again in the doghouse because every single post was ratioed into oblivion. Let me explain everything to you and give you a brief update on Bud Light's current situation. Roll the tape. We have some things to get into. Let's look at the Bud Light Twitter account now, everyone. Take a look at how frequently Bud Light posted on April 1st, 2023, when everything appeared to be fine. Four posts were made in a single day, after two weeks when the boycotts began to spread. Since then, well, they haven't posted anything until, well, a couple days ago, June 22nd, 2023, when Bud Light posts this beer commercial. It's obvious that this is a different approach from the disastrous TikTok campaign they ran during March Madness, but they were sincerely hoping that it wouldn't have been two months. At this point, hopefully, it's all just water under the bridge. Look at the statistics, another dreadful ratio. They have resumed tweeting. Here's one more shot. Those emails can wait till Monday with this little GIF and video form. 3,300 replies to only 540 likes. Footwear optional, but recommended for summer keg carry. Another supremely bad 10 to 1 ratio. It's a summer staple, the old razzle-dazzle. Another dreadful ratio. I'm not sure if the ideas just keep flowing, and I hope that eventually the ratios cease, or at the very least they trend in a more positive manner for Bud Light, and I'm inclined to think that most likely that's the case. But what I'm actually seeing here and what I'm taking away from it is essentially the visual equivalency of a I told you so moment. We have been stating this. It won't be as simple as Bud Light anticipated. There will be no ending to this boycott. Bud Light certainly believes that they have atoned for their crimes and for good reason, too. People will simply forget about the whole event since they have changed their marketing focus. No, no. Although Bud Light may have changed some of their advertising strategies, they continue to support major events, like Toronto Pride Parades, for example. They've learned absolutely nothing. And some people might be saying, well, big deal, a sponsored pride event. I've seen a million companies do that before. Again, I'm coming at this from a different angle. Bud Light associates their brand with a very inappropriate adult event taking on in front of kids. Not the best look, do you think? Bud Light is under fire for, in essence, associating with a particular TikToker who promotes adult lifestyle choices to young children on TikTok. They receive a lot of criticism for it and their reactions. Let's be the Pride Parade's largest sponsor this year. I wish I could show you guys the videos as these stories keep flooding in, but I won't risk jeopardizing my channel. 
They really are that horrible, and they only get worse every year. I'll only read a few headlines because they'll essentially sum up the article. Breaking fully naked adults riding bikes expose their genitalia to children at Seattle Pride. Man in underwear twerks and gyrates in front of numerous children and families for body positivity during Minneapolis Pride Parade. These are but a few instances. I'll tell you right now that there is much more than you could ever hope to see or even imagine. You can easily understand what I mean by casually scrolling through the post-millennials Twitter account. After this entire catastrophe, Bud Light is now connecting its brand to those, uh, the events that the Washington Post reports on. Yes, kink belongs at Pride, and I want my kids to see it. Bud Light is connecting itself to that occasion. You are free to do as you like, after all. They have decided to go with that. I suppose they are free to do so, and consumers are free to decide never to purchase from them again. And from what I can tell, most customers agree. Interestingly, the difference between Ewingling Brewery and Bud Light is more pronounced every day. Ewingling Brewery to Bud Light, hold our beer. This week, the brewery found itself dragged into another controversy. For many years, Ewingling has been a sponsor of Music Fest, an annual festival held in Pennsylvania. On Monday, the festival shared a promo on its Facebook page about this year's event. Ewingling was included in the post as a sponsor. Four days later, the post was edited, and Ewingling was removed from the text of the promotion. Why? Because social media followers went nuts? A family-friendly drag show is a part of the festival's events this year. The original promotion said that babies in arms would be admitted. Children under two may not be recommended for some performances. After the backlash began, ArtsQuest, the venue hosting the event, issued a statement absolving Jungling of any involvement, and the age for admission into the show had been raised to 18+. plus. Jungling has been a supporter of ArtsQuest for many years, along with over 300 local community supporters. We're proud to be a part of their efforts to revitalize an industrial neighborhood in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Through our ArtsQuest sponsorship— we have naming rights to the Music Fest Cafe, presented by Yuangling Venue. ArtsQuest independently plans the events and policies that take place at this venue and all of their other performance areas. Yuangling actively promotes responsible drinking for patrons 21 years of age and older. We're working to align with ArtsQuest regarding appropriate age restrictions for venues associated with our sponsorship. We support their decision to restrict attendance to 18 plus for the June 30th show. For more information, contact info at ArtsQuest. So that's how you go about doing it, huh? Unaware that they were associated with an all ages drag show, Yuengling immediately canceled their sponsorship, had their name and brand removed from the banner, demanded that the event's organizers apologize, and only returned after it was confirmed that the event was for adults 18 years and older. The job is done exactly in that manner. It's a lesson on how to approach one of these delicate PR matters. Ewingling had it so simple, while Bud Light keeps stumbling because they are blatantly being deceitful. They're terrible. They are corporate snakes who act as if they have listened to the customer while actually doing something completely pitiful. And one last little thing, just to show you how desperate this company has become. Not exactly sure how credible this story is. I don't live in China and I don't know how prevalent Bud Light is in China, but apparently, according to Daniel Horowitz from The Blaze, I think he works at The Blaze. He writes on Twitter, a listener of mine who lives in China notes that he's never seen a Bud Light ad in China before. He says that the last few weeks, they are everywhere, with a couple photos here. It appears that Bud Light's goal, one again, is to pivot and attempt to expand into China with all that old expired beer that they're failing to sell in the American retail marketplace rather than apologizing and doing the right thing. Absolutely pitiful. And if you know anything about Chinese consumers, you know how they react to, like, woke movies and things like that. They even have a term for woke Westerners. I think we'll be reporting on this pretty soon as yet another stunning, embarrassing failure for Bud Light once the Chinese market realizes what the brand is truly all about. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get out of here now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.